get women off the treadmill and under the bar? I don't know. They, they come in here, they already come in here off the treadmill and under the bar. So, uh, I don't know, I think they have to have friends that lift weights like you that aren't big, nasty, steroid looking creatures like they see on the store. I'll tell you what the problem is, is the Weeder organization printed all those magazines with Kim Chezhevsky on the fucking front cover. And then we got to have this big conversation with our girlfriends about, no, honey, you're not going to look like this. You're not going to look like you play for the NFL if you, that girl's taking steroids. If you don't take steroids, you'll be okay, right? You don't want to have to have that conversation. And it's the pictures and the muscle magazines is what did it. I think they've pretty much moderated that. Uh, kind of like a, a shop at Walmart. Walmart doesn't have the muscle magazines at, at the cash register like all the grocery stores used to have. 15, 20 years ago, you had to have this conversation because these girls would see these big roided out bodybuilder chicks. Well, well on Instagram. Do what? Now they see them on Instagram. Oh, they do on Instagram? I've never seen one in a Walmart. Yeah, they no, they don't have big, that. But they're not roided out. No, they're not. They're not. Uh, no, I'm talking about the magazines. Not the shoppers. <laughs> Not the shoppers, no. You were just taking the opportunity to say something funny is what you were doing. <clears throat> so, uh, I don't know. They, you know, the IFBB, you know, anybody that reacts badly to that comment is just, you know, look. Why do you think the IFBB discontinued women's bodybuilding competition? They don't sanction that anymore because it was completely out of control. It was a freak show. It was a fucking freak show. And nobody would pay to go see the damn things, and nobody wanted to sponsor them because it was a freak show. So they paired that back. What are the three things they do now? Physique, fitness, and bikini. Figure. Figure's one. Figure. Figure, physique, fitness. I don't fuck. I don't I, I, <laughs> Who knows? I don't have any idea. I don't have any idea. So whatever they're doing now, the what? The bikini part's awesome. What's what's the difference between bikini and figure? I don't know. I think it's just this group takes testosterone and anivar. This girl, these girls only take anivar. Right. The bikini girls don't lift. They don't lift. They need to be soft. They're they're twenty. And the figure girls lift a little bit. A little bit. Physique or the physique or the body so it's just a matter of degree now. So physique has replaced bodybuilding. Yes. And now the physiquers look like bodybuilders, so they're going to discontinue that next. And then we'll just all be, it'll all be bikini. It'll all be bikini. <laughs> Why don't they have porn competition? That's a great idea. Not exactly where I was going with this conversation. <laughs> yeah. yeah, things tend to get away from us in here. Next question. So, so how the que let's get back to Salt Lake's question. The answer to that is that you can't make people act like you want them to act. Just as a general rule, this applies to your parents, especially. It applies to your spouse, most especially. Do not try to coach your girlfriend. Don't coach your wife. Don't do that unless you want a divorce. Don't do it. Don't do it. It doesn't work. You can't tell your parents what to do. You're their kid. You don't, still don't know a goddamn thing, right? You know, don't try, to, don't try to talk them into it. Now, if they want some help, give it to them. Sure, obviously. But you can't talk people into doing this. This is hard. People don't do things that are hard just because somebody tells them to, Right? Help people, diabetics won't even take their insulin. I mean, people just don't do what they're supposed to do. So don't think that you can make them. That's a good point. It is, it's just, you know, there's just, there are limitations in terms of what, and we get asked this question every single, every single seminar. What do you, what do I do if my mother and dad need to lift weights real, real desperately and they won't do it? 
And what the answer is, is you just leave them alone. Leave them alone. Let them die. They're going to die anyway. Let them die. I know we can't stand to see it happen, but I mean, there's all kind of shit you can't stand to see happen that goes on all the time. You just got to just eat it, you know. You don't have the power to make people act like you want them to act. Seems like like, like meth should not be illegal. <laughs> oh, no. <clears throat> meth should be given to those people free so that they'll die. Hurry up and die. But I don't have the, the moral authority or the right to tell you you can't do meth and die. You can die. Take meth. Take all the meth you want. Die. Hurry. <laughs> Get out of the way. But I'm, it's not my business. It's none of my business. Right? I mean, it's the same kind of argument. You know, we just don't have the capacity to make people act like we want them to act. So, I don't know. It, you just have to serve as the best example you can. That's, That's all what I was going to say. I think people might change if they're inspired by their peers. Who That's... Usually, like this, and it has helped their lives and changed it. In the well, every life. gym like this <clears throat> in the country gets members by word of mouth. That's that's how you get members. It's not advertising. Advertising doesn't work for this. Does not work. That's a giant waste of operating capital for a gym is to advertise. You get people that come in because they know somebody is training here. That's why they come in. That's the only thing that works. Uh, programming, you know, you, you, I know you preach three sets by five <clears throat> is uh, the big, you know, the rep scheme is the best scheme for right. the strength. So when well for you, squats and presses, okay, maybe one, one by five for deadlift. Yeah, one set of five so for deadlift. I'm doing three by five with squat today. I did two and a quarter, and I move up five pound increments eventually, mm -hmm. of course, and I've done right. this multiple times as I just hit the ceiling. Or I'll get to the heaviest weight and then go back, I don't know, a week later, and then I'm just, there's no way I can do it. You know, you just hit the wall, plat, plateau in the programming. Now, I, I know you've written about this in some places probably, but where, where do I go from there? Let's say today is, you know, I'm, I'm gonna hit, I hit the wall at 235 next week. I just can't. Do I back up a little bit, do sets of 10 maybe, a couple sets of 10, 20%? No, you do never do 10s. Why would you do lighter weights to think that that would make you stronger? I guess Lighter the only thing I can think of, I'm not arguing, is I, your body gets adapted more to slightly. You, what? Well, t I guess maybe 10 reps of, say, 215. So my body slowly starts to get stronger. It prepares me then to go higher. How's 215 going to make you stronger for 235? I don't know. Maybe the higher reps. reps. Why well, do higher reps at lighter weights make you stronger than heavier weights at lower reps? What is strength, Troy? The what is strength? The production of force against an external resistance. Is 235 a higher external resistance or is 215? A There's just not a lot of point in that, especially for somebody that's not up in the 400s. So, I'm not. so the, the first thing you do when you get stuck is you review the first three questions. Have you read that article? The first three questions. It's called the first three questions. Okay. All right. Read the article. Question number one. <laughs> right. <laughs> how long are you waiting between your sets? How, how long is your rest between your sets? Question number two. How much are you eating? No, I'm sorry. Question number two is how big a jumps are you taking? You try to take 10 pound jumps on your squat. That doesn't work. All right. You try to take five pound jumps on your bench press and your press doesn't work. And question number three is how much you're eating and how much rest are you getting? You're sleeping enough. You're trying to get 2,800 calories a day. You're trying to train on 2,800 calories a day and six hours of sleep. You can't do it, especially if you're older than you know, 22. 
when you're young, you can get away with all kinds of stupid shit. But the older you get, the less forgiving the universe is of stupid shit. Okay? 2,800 calories doesn't work. So if you read the first three questions, and then I think probably lurking in those three questions is the answer to the situation here. That's the answer to the to the deal, is the first three questions. All right? And if you need to get more complicated in your programming, there's a whole book full of that shit called Practical Programming for Strength Training, Volume or Third Edition. That's the one you need to do. Okay. But I think you need to back up and look at the first three questions. Usually, how much you squatted today? Two and a quarter? See, you're not. You're not stuck. You're doing something wrong. Okay. Um, out of all the outside media you've done, uh, what's had the biggest impact on the popularity of starting strength? The biggest impact was Dan Duane's op-ed piece that the New York Times picked up about four years ago. Yeah, it's hanging over there on your wall. Yeah. That took the book to number 23 on Amazon, all titles. Sometimes those things just fall in your lap, but we could not manufacture it. We could not reproduce that effect ourselves. It's just, look, we're narrow casting, as I've said yeah. recently. We're, what, we're talking to a little narrow group of the population that's intelligent enough to appreciate this type of analysis and that is, that, that, that is appealed to by the logic of this program. But remember the, most people cannot explain why if the greatest lifter in the world does something a certain way that that's not necessarily the way to do it. Most people don't understand that. And it's extremely, that's a, that's a hard case to make to people that don't appreciate the subtleties of that, of that logic chain. It's just not, you, I mean, you're limited. I mean, this, you know, the, hey, why would we want to do this low bar, low bar squat shit for Olympic weightlifting? The greatest lifters in the world don't do that. What do you know that they don't know? What do you tell them? You know? I see pictures of Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. squatting. He's got the bar running way he, up on yeah. his neck. And well, Arnold didn't squat that way. Look at Arnold. Yeah. You know? It's a, it's, a, it's a tough sell, isn't it? You know? So it's a, you know, it's a, it's an odd thing. It's an odd thing. It's a, it's a, it's a tough problem we've got, you know. There's not any other program besides this one that makes uh, everybody that does it stronger. Nobody else's program does it. And ours is, it, it always works because it has to. It's based on biology and arithmetic. But I don't know what the hell to do to get it more popular. You know, we're making progress all the time. Little steps here and there, but I don't expect this is ever going to replace army physical fitness. Sit-ups, push-ups, and running, you know. That's always worked so well. <laughs>